Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. Joining me on the summit today is Coach Josh Bresky, the head football coach at Black Hill State University. And Coach, I know that it says on paper you're heading into your second season, but realistically, this is your first season. And, and with that in mind, then, I mean, you've had more than a year and a half to get ready for this right. first full season. So talk about the state of the program right now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I was a former player here at Black Hill State, former graduate. Uh, my time here was extremely special to me, and that's, you know, hence the, the desire to come back and take over the program. Uh, the program's been not in a great state since the transition up to Division Two back in, oh, 2012. Um, since then, this program, is it's been struggling. You know, we're in a great conference, the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. Uh, we see great talent uh, throughout the division every single week, and so it's time for us to get our game up. You know, it's time for us to uh, start recruiting the athletes that are going to get us a conference championship and get us into postseason play. Um, but before we were able to do any of that, Joey, it was about uh, dropping all the bad habits and starting to acquire uh, better winning habits. And so, um, you know, you, you might hear me talk about, you know, the, the cliche analogy of building a house and the foundation and all those things. And, what I didn't understand as a young first time head coach is in order to lay a foundation, you gotta, you gotta dig a hole first. <laughs> and so that's, this whole last year has just been digging out all those bad habits and uh, weeding out some of the bad apples you might say within our program. And I'm extremely confident with the uh, 68 returners we have coming back with the 55 incoming uh, athletes as well. Then I would imagine it's good to have that many months. I mean, 20, 21 months, something like that. You've had time then to dig that hole. So that's that's a positive, I'm sure. Absolutely, 100%. You know, one of the best things that's happened to our program, we're able to uh, get a new strength coach in here, um, working specifically with football. So I was able to hire that position myself. And Derek Van Blarkham has been a huge uh, integral part of, of our process of learning how to uh, how to build confidence in the weight room and uh, one thing that we kind of live by here is there's two ways to do things. You do it right or you do it again. Um, so it's it's developing that that type of mindset, and developing that habit that's it's taken some time. And, and honestly, COVID has been in such a weird way. I hate to say this. It's been a blessing. So you're, you're hitting it on the head, Joy. We've had some time to work on some some skill building and start to uh, distill our team and figure out who those leaders are within our team. And it's been it's been kind of healthy for us, honestly. Well, Coach, it sounds like you're doing things the right way. Uh, no question about that. You talked about the players that are coming back. You had 68 of those. Among those, uh, you know, let's talk about the offense for a little bit. You have a couple of quarterbacks that are returning, and those quarterbacks do have some uh, time on the field uh, in in the uh, the Black Hills jerseys there as well, and in Chance Even, Tyler Hammonds, uh, among other players that are coming back. I know that you've recruited some quarterbacks as well. One of the players, too, that's coming back as a grad student is uh, Kyler Harpham, and and I'm not sure there's anything that, that this guy doesn't do at, at this point in time. Leading receiver for you, he also rushes the ball. He's passed the ball for you, returns kicks, returns punts has uh, forced a fumble in, in the last full season, recovered a safety as well. Uh, do you have him selling popcorn? I'm not sure. Uh, if, if he couldn't do that, too, in his, in his spare time, if there's a time he's not on the field, uh, let's take a look at that offense. Yeah, absolutely. And Kyler's a huge part of it. And he's uh, one of my captains. He was voted captain right away when we got here, uh, approaching this first 2021 season. And season in, obviously, quotation marks. <laughs> Um, but no, our offense is very electric. You know, we are, uh, we're fast. We're very fast is what we're finding out. We have a lot of, you know, our average wide receiver body type. We're looking at, you know, a 5'10", 180. We are not very big offensive, uh, offensively as far as our skill positions go, but our kids can roll. They're fast. And what's great is my offensive coordinator uh, and offensive line coach, Ben Blake, has done a wonderful job installing our offense and uh, complementing those strengths of us being so fast. So we stretch the field horizontally. You'll see us run a lot of rocket toss. Um, and it's, you know, they, my coaches always get mad at me when I do interviews and talk about our plays. Like, don't tell everyone. We're running. <laughs> so, fellas, it's, it's out there. Anyone can jump on and watch highlights. We want to stretch the field not only vertically, but also horizontally. So our guys do a great job, uh, you know, running those deep routes. And that's been a huge emphasis this spring is connecting on the deep ball with our quarterbacks, uh, matching up with that speed. We're not, we're no longer under throwing the post route, which is beautiful to see. 
Um, but yeah, we are, we're, we might be small, but holy cow, we, we've got some speed. We've got some legitimate speed on our offense. That's funny. I, I, I like the response of your other coaches. Oh, gosh. That is great. We, we are speaking now with Coach Josh Bresky from Black Hill State in what is technically his second season at his alma mater, uh, a place where he was a four-year starter as well as an All-American. Coach, you were talking about you know how many players that you do have coming into the program. Signing day, you signed 38 uh, 37 of those high school students, uh, transfer student as well. So you, you have a, a big class coming in from 11 different states, and, and that's without the ones that have come in since signing day too. Correct, yeah, and we're extremely pleased with that class. You know what's great is uh, when I first got here, I got hired just before Christmas in 2019. Um, and so roughly we had you know about six to seven weeks to put a signing class together. Well, I only had four coaches, including myself, hired at that point. So we were doing overtime. Uh, matter of fact, all of us were living together in a cabin. Uh, we had a TV on top of the fireplace mantle. We had another TV on the floor in front of the fireplace. And we'd stay up all night just watching film. Who's out there? What are we looking for? Who can we get? Um, and we pieced together that first you know, class of 2020 uh, with just a handful of coaches. Now, this year, we've had a full staff a full year to recruit and I'm really really pleased with how hard my staff has worked uh, to put this class together so yeah we inked 38 guys on signing day and we've added 17 since then so extremely pleased the emphasis joy was we need offensive and defense alignment and we need them bad you know that was the one thing we kind of felt like the cupboards were a little empty as far as numbers go not necessarily talent we love the talent of our existing O and D linemen uh, we're just thin and we got so thin to the point where we had to started making a few concessions here and there in spring ball and had to get creative of how are we going to practice today? And I don't want to live in that world anymore. So we, we bolstered up the, the lines and I think you've, you can see that reflected in our signing class for sure. And, you know, I know how big it is, the, um, especially in Division Two, in the trenches. It's it's really it's it's a tough place, and and a lot is won and lost in in especially in as you go in the upper echelon in the D two uh, programs. You know, it's it's one there in the trenches. Well, I'll go outside the trenches just a little bit then, uh, and talk about your defense and lead things off there in the secondary. Bailey Rosenstraw who uh, is coming out, one of your leaders in tackling, found a way to get things done. Also got uh, back into uh, opponents' backfields as well. Uh, one of the leaders in tackles for loss had a couple of sacks. So uh, he's somebody that's returning. And, and uh, you know, you were talking about the defensive line, how you shored things up there as well. Absolutely. And Bailey also is another captain, uh, voted on by his peers. Bailey's done a wonderful job just being a leader, not only on the field, but he's a great student. And the kid works his tail off in the weight room. Uh, he's had a great weight room voice. And, you know, we talk a lot about the weight room. The weight room's huge for us. It's, you know, when we can't be out on the field year long, where are we developing that confidence? Where are we developing those winning habits? Um, and it's in the weight room. And so Bailey's been great um, on and off the field. Bailey plays safety for us. One of his best attributes, the kid's physical. He loves to come and hit. Um, he's very, very intelligent, so he understands the defense. And, you know, I think mentally probably the biggest load is put upon our safeties in our defense. Uh, we run a four-down system primarily. Um, and those people who know us, again, I might get in trouble on this interview with my coordinators, but those, of you, those people who know us, we do run a, a 52 as well um, in certain situations. And that's, that's kind of – we keep it pretty simple on defense. We keep it extremely simple so that our guys can play fast. Um, but yeah, I've really been pleased with, uh, the progression of our defense, especially through spring ball. You'll see, um, Bailey Rosenstraw doing a number of things for us. We have, uh, Jarrell Ganaway returning as, as a super, super senior had the, uh, medical red shirt and then a COVID year back. So I think Jarrell might be older than I am now. I can't remember, <laughs> but no, he's great. Another team captain, uh, Aaron Teal, a Sam linebacker who played safety, put on 15 pounds this off season and it's just been uh, just been doing a wonderful job for us. I think you'll see him flying around the field, making a lot of plays for us this year as well. Um, and then our corner play, we're really, really confident with the, with our returning corners that we have. And we'll be adding a few. We had a true freshman Deontay Moody play for us this last year as a starter out of Arkansas, uh, out of the little rock area and a uh, kid, you can't hardly get to speak, but man, he can guard people all day and he's extremely humble and, does things the right way. Um, 
Isaiah Tivis, Xavier Bonham, Levinsky Simon, between those four, it's going to be hard for any of our incoming freshmen to crack that cornerback uh, too deep. So we're, we feel like we can play a lot of man coverage and get aggressive on defense because of that. Um, you know, and then, and then getting some size in the middle. That was kind of what this signing class is all about. So we're excited. We've, we've got a little bit more electric and I think it's going to allow us to do some more things. Sounds like a good <laughs> class. I, you, I, I don't want you to get in trouble, but I'm going to ask you one more <laughs> question then. So <laughs> uh, see, see if, uh, see if this helps at all. Let's talk about your schedule. You get the, the schedule underway on a Thursday night, September 2nd, taking on a tough opponent in Dickinson state, uh, coming in. And then you're on the road after that, uh, the next Saturday against William Jewell. And finally, that RMAC schedule that you were talking about, uh, that get un- gets underway and that's another road trip. And you head out to a uh, CSU Pueblo there, uh, a solid schedule, I think for you all this year to really get, uh, get then your first full year underway. I think so too, Joey. And that's, you know, this rivalry with Dickinson, you can call it a rivalry. We used to play them all the time when I was a student athlete here. Um, These two schools have been playing each other for a while back in the NAI days and the days of the DAC, uh, the Dakota Athletic Conference. And got a couple plaques hanging up in my office here, uh, pictures of my teammates and I. And, you know, those, uh, those games with Dickinson were intense. They're only a few hours north of us here. And then, what I found is obviously we run on the same recruiting trails for local kids, regional kids. And so uh, it's going to mean a lot. You know, it's it's always a little bit. I, I hate using the word uh, hearing the phrase and using the phrase trap game. You know, I, I don't buy into that. But, you know, we have a lot to lose in playing those guys. And I feel like we have a lot to gain, too. Um, you know, I'm still going for my first win as a head coach and our first win as a team in this new coaching staff era. Um, and hopefully we get it on that Thursday night. So, and then, uh, yeah, William Jewell's a familiar opponent. Um, I saw them as assistant coach in 2019 when I was at Lindenwood and, uh, they're, you know, they're no slouch. I really, I really like their game. I think their offense is pretty creative and they've got a great quarterback coming back. Um, I think it's a really good matchup for us. So it would be great to be driving down to Pueblo two and O with a little chip on our shoulder. Um, hopefully healthy as well. Um, so we can get that RMAC play started. But I really like how our schedule ends this year with South Dakota Mines, Mesa, and Shadron. Um, Those are three games that we kind of have marked on our schedule. There's a lot of familiarity with the staffs there. Uh, Charlie Flora at at Mines is my defense coordinator for seven years or so, and I've got a great relationship with Charlie. Uh, Tremaine Jackson at Colorado Mesa, him and I worked three years together at the University of Sioux Falls. Uh, They kind of put a hurting on us this last season. So, uh, we gotta we gotta have a better showing versus them at their place this year, and then Shadron State College, of course. Jay Long, uh, Jay Long was my offensive line coach for five seasons when I was, a, I was an athlete here, and I worked for him for three seasons at two different schools. So um, there's a lot of familiarity there. You know, we're all we're all boys and we're all friends, but at the end of the day, nobody wants to walk home a loser. So you know, and, uh, everyone's pretty professional in this conference. That's the one thing that I've, I've seen across this league, Joey, is the head coaches in this league, all of which are older than me, have been extremely helpful, extremely professional. Uh, they're in coaching for the right reasons. But, of course, we're all so competitive as all get out and we want to kick the crap out of each other. So <laughs> it's a fun dynamic. I like it. I like that on, on both both uh, standpoints too. Both things you talked about, and they're both good things to have. And that's that's always nice to hear. But you know, you do you do want to see these teams go at each other and and uh, give their best out there on the field. So it, it looks like it should be a good season laid out for you all. For Coach Josh Bresky, who is again technically second season, we're gonna at least for for this broadcast, we're gonna say hey, it's your first full year at the helm. Love so. It. Uh, get out there and, and make things happen. It's all fresh and new for for most of the fans anyway to, to get to see, and we're ready to see those fans back in the stands too. Coach, thank you very much for taking time with us today, and success to you, to the Yellow Jackets this season, and we look forward to following you all uh, along. Thanks for uh, being with us here on the Summit. My pleasure, Joey. Thanks for having me.